All right, good morning, everybody. Today, I'm going to show you how I fixed my Grands Forest Brook Scandinavian Forest Axe. For those of you that have watched my prior videos on Grands Forest Brook and this axe in particular, you know I got it as a Christmas gift from my father. In a nutshell, it would not hold an edge. No matter what it was chopping, no matter how I used it, its edge would not stay intact. Rolling, chipping, um, it just was, uh, it just would not stand up to any use that I put it to. So I went to go and tune this up for North American hardwoods, any hardwoods really. If you can get a hold of these Grobit files, they're excellent. G R O B E T, made in the U.S., very affordable. So, what I'm going to do is File that edge back. Um, I was going to take it back from the grind at the factory that it came with, 15 at the heel and toe, 17 at the center. I was going to file it back to roughly 20 degrees, um, maybe slightly thicker at the center line. Uh, and what I found, is the steel was extremely soft when I first started filing. But... Filing. but after I removed about an eighth of an inch from the bit, I started filing Swedish steel. The Swedish steel that you hear about. Um, in fact, I when I was filing this ax, I was using a brand new Grobit file. Great file, high quality. Um, I thought there was something wrong with the file. Maybe. maybe. Oh, wow. Wow. Fascinating. This steel is significantly harder at this point than it was when I started. So I gotta check this out. Oh, that's my caliper. Where's my... Where are my hardness files? So, good Lord. Wow, okay. So here, now this is a brand new file. I just took this out of the bag. Um, in fact, where is the bag? I probably have the bag somewhere around here, right here. All right. So here you go. Here's the bag, it's a brand new file. Um, and you saw how I cut through the first probably 32nd of an inch, just like it was nothing with this ax. But now check this out. It cuts, but... nowhere near as hard as it cut before that is incredible i would say that is a rockwell hardness difference of probably five at least maybe, maybe a poor temper i thought i was just you know i i thought maybe i got a bum product from grobit which ended up not to be the case at all um, I took my second file out of the bag, and sure enough, uh, I had just removed all of the soft cladded steel on this axe, and I was now down to what you would think of when you think of high-quality Swedish steel. It behaved like a high-quality vintage axe, which is to say, it didn't really want to be filed. You could file it, but you had to have you know, firm pressure, and, and you better be using a new file. Um, I was extremely impressed with the quality of the steel after I removed, um, you know, like I said, an eighth of an inch of steel, which is a lot to remove. Um, it's probably five years of regular use. I'm gonna take our same files and I'm gonna start at 60. Let's start at 60. Ooh. <laughs> Wow, wow, you guys, 
That's amazing. 60 doesn't cut. That's incredible. Um, here is 65. And 65 cuts. You can see the 65 cuts here. You see these lines? Those are the 65. Um, I'm gonna go to 55 here. We'll see what this does. Nope. Right across. You see that? Here. Nothing. I'll go to the clean side. There's no scratches anywhere on this one from the files. Nothing. And guys, this is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Look at that. There's just the faintest of lines. And I bet I could take that out with a rag. You see that? 55 didn't even touch the bit. Um, so that, I mean, that's incredible. That's incredible. Absolutely blows my mind. Um, so, um, so here's what I think happened. I think at the factory, the, the gentleman that sharpened this went about it like in this way, uh, placed the ax heel first into the grinder and then drew it across, flipped it over, heel first into the grinder and then drew it across. Uh, and, and if you think about it, there's an eighth inch steel here on the cheeks at the top end. You can see there. Uh, they had to they had to grind from that eighth inch thickness down to 15 degrees. That's a lot to take off. So I think this axe spent too much time on the grinder. I think it got too hot. Um, I think it was ground too thin. And in grinding it so thin, the grinder ruined the temper all the way up to an eighth inch back. Um, I am ecstatic that the temper wasn't ruined further back than an eighth inch. Um, because you're, like I said, you're every, every little bit that you take off of your ax head, uh, that is shortening the life of your ax. You've only got temper, you know, probably to an inch and a half off your bit. And once you do end up filing it back far enough, I mean, you're going to ruin the balance of your ax. It, it's just, you know, um, so you don't want to have to take off an eighth of an inch from your bit if you can avoid it um, at one time, that is. So let me just say, I'm ecstatic with this ax now. Um, I'm, I'm so happy that I was able to figure out what was going wrong with it. And I hope that everyone who watched my prior videos on Gransfors Brook and the Scandinavian Forest Axe can watch this video. I want to do a video about why you might want to purchase a Gransfors Brook or a Holtzbrook Axe specifically, and what makes them unique. My reasons, I haven't heard anybody talk about them, um, but let me just say that, uh, that I believe that this axe, for several reasons, could be well worth the money for you specifically based on the manufacturing process. And, and I'm not gonna get into that too much in depth in this video, uh, but just to let you know, that uh, down the road, you should expect something coming out about this ax because the way these axes are made is truly unique and it does in many ways set them apart from other axes on the market today. Um, but again, it's a personal choice. Um, I just like to really dive in deep into the manufacturing processes that everybody uses and, and figure out what they're doing and why it works, why it doesn't work. Uh, in this case, uh, it just did, just did not work filing or grinding, excuse me, this ax so thin at the factory. Um, and I will say, I went back to my Grand Sports Brook dealer, same place I bought this ax. They had a whole new line of Scandinavian forest axes on the shelf, on the rack there. I looked at each one and not a single one was ground sub 20 degrees. So, you know, I, I'm not going to say that my video had anything to do with it, uh, but I will say after I put my video out there, I started seeing numerous other people pop up on 
YouTube, Facebook forums talking about they have the same issues with their axe. And I think that very likely could have gotten the attention of the company and made them aware that they just can't be grinding their axes so thin. It causes a, a number of problems. Um, again, I'm not taking any, uh, any credit or blame, depending on how you view that. Uh, but I, I do believe that my purpose in having a channel that makes people aware of, uh, of these issues with their products, what they're spending their money on. And, and, you know, for a lot of people, what they are entrusting their life to and the lives of their, of their family. You know, I, I think it's a good thing to have people independent from these companies, put information out there. Um, it helps everybody hurts no one. <laughs> so anyways, um, so thanks for watching and, um, I'll catch you next time. Keep an eye out for the Grands Fours Holtzbrook video uh, on their manufacturing processes. And uh, thanks for watching in advance.